Aloha. You're here with Behind the Scenes and Beyond the Talk. I'm here with Sam and Misa. My name is Rachel Jurgen, and I am a productions coordinator and facilitator with TEDx, as well as many other hats that I wear with TEDx Honolulu. And my name is Samantha Hudson. I'm a long time or at least several year volunteer of TEDx Honolulu. Um, this series is dedicated to showcasing our speakers, volunteers, and the community partners that we work with at TEDx Honolulu. And our most recent event was Paradigm Shift, where we actually had our guest that's here with us today um, as one of our community partners. That's right. And so today's guest is Misa Tupo. Just pronounce that yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And Misa is the founder of Oahu Fringe Festival. So we actually just wanted to start today's episode by just learning a little bit more about the Oahu Fringe Festival. Sure. Uh, hi there. Nice to see you guys. And I'm glad to be here. Um, the Oahu Fringe Festival, well, it started, uh, w actually, we just finished our fourth event uh, this, this year in Feb. Um, but our first one started in 2011, mm -hmm. and from the initial beginning, it's just been so exciting to be a part of the creative community here in Hawaii, so, mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, the opportunity to partner with uh, Terex Honolulu allowed us to uh, do a little bit more of outreach and reaching out to the community, so I'm excited to be here, guys. Well, we're Hi. happy to have <laughs> you. It's great to have someone. Uh, with your uh, your festivals, the background and the history and, and the diversity of your festival to join with our or, uh, organization and, and it's just a great partnership. So we really enjoyed having you. And oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. No, um, I've spoken with uh, Genesis uh, a few times about putting on festivals here in Hawaii or putting on events. <coughs> so the opportunity to partner. Um, when it came up, I, I immediately said, hey, yes, I want to do it. <laughs> and being involved in, in, in it, it was just exciting. Um, paradigm shift, correct? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, having, having the opportunity to you know, shift into other venues and other and partner, partner with other community events, just is a huge benefit for us. Because you know, we share, we network. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I was excited to be involved in the um, TEDx event recently, so I'm, I'm hoping that mm -hmm. our partnership will continue because it's very beneficial okay. uh, for us, especially when we've only been going for a few years. Well, oh, this is mm -hmm. our fourth year, uh, but TEDx in itself, I think it's about the same age here yeah, in Honolulu. It is. Um, yeah. So yeah. combining forces. I think four years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so TEDx is all about having ideas worth spreading and yes. sort of bringing the community together around mm -hmm. that. Um, can you explain a little bit, maybe in more detail, about what the different fringe festival events, what it, it entails? Um, Our specific yeah. fringe festival? Yeah. Yep. Um, well, let me just give a quick brief history uh, of the actual uh, concept mm -hmm. of the fringe. It started. Uh, run up in 1947 in Scotland. <clears throat> Basically, this is a real succinct uh, uh, story. It started with a bunch of artists who weren't invited to be a part of the uh, big festival in Scotland at the time. Mm -hmm. And so these artists said, you know what? You're not inviting us to be part of this. And we are local artists. Here in, our, in their own hometown, they weren't invited. So they said, you know what? We're going to do our own festival. So they packed up their bags and gears and whatnot and made the own festival around the fringe of the oh, main festival. in Edinburgh, in right? Edinburgh, yes. Oh, okay. And there was this um, journalist who came upon these entrepreneurial artists and said, oh, you know what? There's some sort of fringe enterprise happening. And so that word fringe got connected to these artists. And fast forward, a uh, bunch of countries and I should say cities around the world picked up on their idea and said, you know what? we should do the same thing. And fast forward some more, here in Hawaii, I say, you know what, this place has tons of talent. Why don't we do one? And then I said, um, then I approached a colleague of mine, and we basically just went ahead and did it. So our fourth year is done, and I'm looking forward to doing our fifth year. Um, as, as an idea worth spreading, it is very similar to TED, TEDx. Mm -hmm. you know, 
because a simple idea just took off. It, oh, yeah. Not only was it shared with <laughs> its home local um, artist, but it just took off all over the world. And it even reached uh, New Zealand, where I grew up. And I picked up on that idea, or I got involved in it. So when I moved to Hawaii, that idea of something worth sharing with your community, I, you know, I approached them, artists here in Hawaii, and said, hey, you know, you, do you like this idea? And that sharing got us to where we are today. Great. Yeah. It, it's are been you exciting. Artist? Yes. Um, I started out, well, I went to uh, drama school. Uh, that was my background, trained as an actor. Uh, and I did that in New Zealand. Um, but when I came to Hawaii, it was a little bit difficult to, um, to stay or survive as a professional full-time uh, actor. Um, so I had to look at other ways to keep the creative juices going, uh, but also to find ways to live financially. Hawaii is an interesting <laughs> place. <laughs> um, so my time here has been challenging. But when you meet other people, oh, for example, um, when I met uh, Genesis, her enthusiasm, she's very enthusiastic about this whole TEDx thing. She yeah, and she, she and I, we've been talking about event producing and the difficulties. Um, so my own challenge is sharing that with Genesis. And, you know, we're talking back and forth, sharing ideas, and again, getting back to that paradigm mm -hmm. shift. Uh, she's been very supportive. And so I'm happy to be part of that network and that community. So I've had a little bit of, you know, up and down on trying to um, find a place here in Hawaii. Yeah. And so I know that TEDx Honolulu also links back to a bigger TEDx organization. Mm -hmm. And I know that Genesis and some of her planning also reaches back to them as well. And I wonder if the... Uh -huh. Fringe Festival is similar. Right. TED is to TEDx as Fringe Festival Oahu is to... Well, the main one is in Scotland, in Edinburgh. Um, just trying to connect that, that question. Um, there's a uh, um, uh, Fringe Festival community, yes, obviously. And all the Fringe managers, we share ideas. And so what uh, you guys do when you get back to the the, the big TED, I also go back to all the other French festivals and say, you know what, I'm having problems with this. Uh, what can mm. you, uh, what um, uh, ideas that you can give me to help us and grow? So yeah, we do a lot of sharing. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of similarities with the concept of TEDx and the Oahu French Festival. And when I looked up uh, the kind of history of TEDx and uh, the gentleman who started it. I've forgotten his name. Mm. It'll names. come back to me. <laughs> Anyhow, he took the idea of another gentleman who has actually um, started the whole TEDx talk. Thing. And he just took it another level. And for the French festival, that's the same thing. The French festival started <coughs> in Scotland, and then other artists, other cities took it to another level. So it has grown. Mm. And so I see a lot of similarities working with uh, TEDx on the Lulu because I, the fringe we're not holding on to any information um, we share that with the community and I see that um, touches with um, TEDx on the Lulu. Yeah so I, I think it's so interesting there's a global community that it sounds like both Oahu fringe and then also um, you, 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 know, you can't you can't deny this, this global phenomenon of, of where the fringe has gone and obviously where TEDx has, has, right. you know, has just been blown up um, information constantly flows. Um, so th there are a lot of similarities, and I'm glad yeah. to be involved. Because in Because it was a little more abstract and obscure before mm. TED. Some people would be like, what? And same thing with Fringe Festival. Yeah. I'm sure, what's that? And now exactly. it's more commonplace. Well, you, know? you know, when I, um, <laughs> when I first heard of TED, I, I thought TED, T-E-D, was somebody like a person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, wow, this guy, TED, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got all these little X's, X's, but the more I um, researched, I went into it. I went, wow, you know what? This is very similar to a uh, French festival. A group of artists started, and then the idea got shared, exactly. and then it just you know, got blown up. So this relationship is, is beneficial for both of us. Actually, you know, I, we had a great time at the, um, 
When was the day the exam for content? Date was when a couple or months where? ago. When? Uh, yeah, uh, it was just a month ago. A month ago. Uh, March 28th? March 28th. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Months ago. Almost. <laughs> it almost, I've forgotten the date. Mm. Um, it was beneficial in a lot of ways in that we had people that had not heard of the fringe. And just getting back to what you mentioned, Ted, who's Ted? <laughs> the fringe, right. what is fringe? When people find out a little bit more about it, that to me is the benefit of being in the partnership mm -hmm. as, uh, as this. So I'm, again, I keep saying I'm excited. Well, I we're am. excited <laughs> too, honestly. We can our, our partners very carefully. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, thank so. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, have you ever been to a fringe festival? Any, any other fringe festivals? Except this one. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, I grew up in New Zealand. That was the first time I discovered the fringe concept. And really? I got involved in it as a performer, but also as an audience member. Um, I just loved being involved in, in, the, in that circle, in the environment. So when I came to Hawaii, I said, you know what? There are a lot of talent here in Hawaii. We should investigate um, creating a festival in Hawaii. Um, so the passion that I have uh, for, for being involved in a, in, in a festival, I just took that and again shared it with the folks here in Hawaii. So New Zealand was the place where I discovered the fringe. Um, yeah, so to me it's a great, what did I do? Uh, I performed, I watched, um, I talked to other people about it. Um, I was in New Zealand uh, 2009 and I participated in a Fringe Festival in the city that I grew up, the Auckland Fringe Festival, so I was really excited about that. Uh, you know, going back to your own hometown and seeing the Fringe Festival. To me, it was exciting, so I, I said, bet. I'm going to be part of this. So <laughs> that's what I did. But you know, oh, being a performer, I think it's just exciting because you're sitting there watching all these crazy people do their work, and that motivates you. And then to me, oh, I was just saying, inspiring. So. Well, I, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> we're going to go to a uh, commercial break, and then we're going to learn more about the Fringe Festival and, and uh, their partnership with TEDx. Aloha, my name is Paul Jackson, better known as PJ, and my local interest is in sports. I have my own sports radio show at KWAI AM 1080 that you can stream live. I also have my own website, pjsportsradio.com. We have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the islands. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in, in depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward to, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia, and by Asia we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world, uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Into Aloha. Images. Welcome back to Beyond the Scenes and Behind the Talk. Actually, Behind the Talk and Beyond the Scenes. This is Misa. We are speaking with him. He's from Oahu Fringe Festival. And Sam, my co-host, we are finding out a little more about this Oahu Fringe Festival. Yes. What would you like to know? Well, we would like to know, what does a fringe festival look like? I'm, I'm interested, I'm curious, it sounds really great. Uh, creatives running around doing cool things, but what, what is yes. really going on? Well, let me try to uh, paint a picture. Uh, fringe festival, it can be anything, okay? Uh, for example, uh, you can go and see a show that is a, a clown act, okay? You like it. And then you say, okay, I'm done with that. Then you can go to the next venue or stay at that same venue, and another show would come up. And that show could be totally different. It could be a, a person just by themselves on, on the stage talking about, oh, I can't say, talking about their family, and that could be a show. Or you go to the other venue, and there could be a show about burlesque or cabaret or anything at all. It's, it's a variety. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a, 
I guess I could say a, a variety show, but within that you could have, um, as I mentioned, clown, circus shows, uh, theater, music, dance, and we've had a variety since we first started. Uh, consistently, I'd say we've had a, a lot of dance acts or movement-based shows. Oh. So you can go for many things. And we even had uh, pole dancing, acrobatic uh, work. Um, so if you have a show that you want to do, uh, just sign up. You can even do a show. Performance. Yeah, perfor and perform it, yes. Okay. Don't be shy. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds sort of like a pop-up, sort of pop-up performance kind of opportunity. That's a, to, that's a to good some, term to use, yeah. To some extent. Um, but the shows that come on, either they've been, um, uh, what's the word, uh, restaged, or sorry, um, reworked to stage for our show, or totally new. And we like shows that are brand new, and we want acts to, to challenge themselves. And you know, when, when, when you have two mediums coming together for a show, that to me is exciting, because you see different paradigms <laughs> 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 coming together and making this whole, and that is exciting. Yeah. And, and speaking of paradigms and paradigm shift, as our theme was this year for TEDx Honolulu, mm -hmm. I know that you guys were there in force. Really, there were um, several of folks from the French Festival performing and just being engaged in the more, um, I guess, interactive area. Yeah. And you know, I, I really enjoy that. Uh, again, let me touch on it briefly, is we got, well, the French got to meet different people from different communities. And we right. got to meet the TEDx community. Um, what was exciting was people interacted. People didn't just walk by, you know, they asked questions, they right. talked to you. But because ours was a performance related event, and we had a uh, performer there, her name was Willow Chang. Uh, she did some ballet dancing. And there were a group of people that slowly, slowly, you can watch them mm -hmm. doing a little bit of this. Oh, I like this. You know, started moving. And then the more, of, um, the more time they spent standing watching, you know, they were inspired. So they all jumped on and joined her in, in that interactive piece. And that to me is, is a great uh, indicator of how much um, this whole um, interaction thing is important when you yes. partner with somebody else. Excuse me, I, I might. Michael stuck. So oh, I had to okay. stop talking. <laughs> but it is true, and especially yeah. because your audience is slightly different. Probably mm -hmm. some, several of the people would go to both. I know I would definitely attend both. But there's some new audiences that you're reaching now by being at TED Talks. You know, yes. who are now introduced yeah. to this, and, and uh, it, that's but exciting. Definitely, because again, getting back to what we talked about, they didn't know about us. Right. But without this opportunity to come into this um, collaboration, I don't think we've reached out to those uh, communities. But I must say that um, at the TED Talks uh, in, um, uh, a couple months ago, or last month, um, <laughs> uh, there's a gentleman there who spoke, uh, Shane, he actually did a show for us about two years ago. Oh. So there was that little connection, which was I uh, really enjoyed, and I was happy that I, the Fringe was there as Shane uh, talked. That is great. No, that that's is a great, great <laughs> collaboration there. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anytime diversity can be celebrated and different groups can come together where they might not yeah. have ordinarily. Another thing is um, there was another booth that was next to us, and the person um, looking after the booth, she and her partner actually went to the Fringe Festival. But when I got talking to them, she didn't make the connection right away. and. Here's a story. Oh, we, have a, we went to see a show. A friend was involved in it. Oh. And the, the more we got talking, they said, that's us. <laughs> wow. so, again, so she didn't even know it was a fringe festival yes. that she went to. She exactly. just knows that she went to see her friend. Yes, and yes. And then I made the connection. She made the connection went, ah, the aha moment. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so do, do the fringe festival events happen with other partners? Like you're joining with TEDx in our case, but are there other... Partners yes. or events that you also uh, we do, um, but one of our main partners is actually the venues themselves. Because without mm -hmm. having a venue, it would be very difficult for our French festival to happen. So what uh, venues? Uh, we started in Chinatown with venues in Chinatown, and we've stayed in Chinatown with the Marks and Arts Garage, uh, On King Art Center, uh, next door, uh, and a few of us. Oh. Um, uh, 
upstairs dragon upstairs. Oh, yeah, those are great places. Yeah, and there, and there are others. Um, one of the things that happened for us this year was we expanded a little bit. So we did a show in uh, Kaka'ako oh, at nice. the Kaka'ako Agora. The relationship that you get from going to different venues or partnering with different folks, it, it, it really helps your event. Um, it was actually a good boost uh, for us. Great. So, yeah. Have you seen your attendance rise each year? Or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you compare our festival, our fringe, with other fringe festivals around the world, we're, we're way at the bottom ten in terms of attendance um, and resources as well. But we have grown, and this year was a, a you know we got to the top. Uh, we just audience-wise, just under a thousand. So oh, that's great. from, I think we started with like 400 people that came, or maybe 600. I think I may have those numbers wrong. But in the short four years, well, we've had this amount of people come through, and that to me is exciting. Yeah, yeah. so do you yeah. partner with all the different, like, or not all the different, but I'm, I'm sure there are tons of different uh, groups that do theater and musical groups and all of that. So do you reach out to them and say, hey, this is who we are, yes. come and join us? It, um, when the call, is, uh, when I'm ready to s you know, tell people about it, the call goes out. And But whoever comes and whoever signs up, you know, that, that's who we, we got. Um, so if you, for example, if you want to sign up and do a show, even if I suck, you'd still take me? <sighs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, even wow. if like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, but no, but even if people are new, if they're, if they are exactly. not clear, because, see, we at TEDx, so not only do we have people with ideas worth spreading, mm -hmm. but if these people are not super comfortable spreading their ideas in a public forum, we have someone that assists them to do that. So I just wonder if I'm you know, have this great love or something, but I don't know how to translate it. Is there someone who can assist me with this? Yes. Or? Give me a call and I can uh, give it off to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, whatever show you want to do, we'll accept it. Of course, it has to be a performance piece. Right. Right, mm -hmm. so yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so how does the planning for your events take place? So for, t yeah, TEDx, we have several months where we have speaker auditions, applications, yeah. etc. cetera. The, each fringe uh, has its own you know, way of, of, of uh, uh, auditioning. I should, perhaps maybe that's not the right word. But um, for us, whoever signs up, so it's a first come, first serve basis. Um, there are other fringe festivals, and then they get thousands of uh, applicants, and they have to call or they have to um, pick. Uh, we don't do that because we don't have thousands signing up. So we take whoever signs up. Um, if you look at the Fringe Festival, like the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, they get tons of people. They get tons of people. Uh, or New York and uh, Orlando, they, they have the opportunity to pick and choose. We don't. Okay. Um, uh, what you guys do with TEDx, that's a great idea. Uh, again, getting back to what you say, oh, they may not be uh, confident enough. Same, if, if you're not confident, but if you're willing to ha take a chance, and that, to me, is the most important thing. Take a chance. Spread your idea. Talk to people, because right. you never know that could be the greatest idea in the world. Right, sure. or someone yeah. could really connect with that and be like, oh, man, exactly. I, want, I wanted to express myself in the same way. Or yeah. Oh, look, uh, I ran into uh, one of the speakers, uh, Brandon. I forget his name. Brandon. We should have a little table where yeah. we can <laughs> look them up <laughs> at the last TEDx talk. He... I know him as a parent, and the work that he uh, does, um, I thought he was going to talk about that, but he talked about light. If I had not mm -hmm. gone to the uh, paradigm shift, I would not have you know, caught up with him and talked to him about his talk. I mean, that idea to me was exciting, because we as human beings, look, we have lights here. So he talked about how light affects us. And I stood there and said, wow, you know what? Brandon, I, I did not know this about you. Wow. So <laughs> again, that connection to me with the community, the TEDx community, was was very very beneficial, okay. and th that's something that I could relate to. You know, we go to sleep and we wake up and do stuff, but we stay up an extra hour too because we have light. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So the connections, again, as you say, if we don't share our ideas with others, how do we know? You know, sharing is important. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And I, and I think that um, part of the thing that Genesis has really done with at least her volunteers is really try to cultivate that sense of either confidence or 
leadership and I think that just these types of opportunities do exactly that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, the volunteers that I um, worked with uh, the TED Talk, they were very helpful. You know, ask them questions for help, and then we just have this. <laughs> I don't think I saw you guys. But <laughs> Obviously uh, the not. Ones, <laughs> the ones, <laughs> hey, come on, the ones that I talked to that helped us. They were confident. They knew what they were doing. Where were you yeah, well, guys? it's all types. That's the thing, mm -hmm. you know, right? Yeah. You get volunteers, and just like you said with your artist, you can't pick and choose. And well, I, I know you want to help, but you're, you're not exactly what we're looking for. No, yeah. you take everyone, and you take from them what they have to give, yes. and you see something in them, especially if you're trained uh, or just innately fabulous like Genesis, where she can find <laughs> this in the person and pull it out and show them just enough to be interested themselves and think, well, maybe I could do this, or, you know, with that encouragement and such. Um, so do you have a team of volunteers, or how yes, do you do this? Uh, we do a call out for volunteers and people mm -hmm. come help. Uh, we uh, have a small team of people that help. Uh, with sort of the planning and that, but we also go beyond that and call out uh, folks to come and help. Um, just touching on the word cultivate, um, nurturing that, yeah, you gotta be able to cultivate uh, people because you can't just tell them, uh, oh, you suck, you know? Right. That's <laughs> very dishonest. Not very That's effective. Right. Yeah, yeah, because they don't <laughs> suck in every yeah. way. You just have no. to say, well, oh, you know what? Yeah. You are good at yeah. this, yeah. or yeah. I can see a lot of potential, <clears throat> and if you could just push yourself and I can help push you in the right direction. Exactly, and then I think that's what, I mean, maybe I could be wrong here, but I think that's what TEDx does, is those ideas that they, that they share, people talking about their passion or sharing their passion, I think that's very important. And some of the um, TED Talks that I've seen online, you know, it's probably something that I won't get into, but when you listen to people talk about it, that's very inspiring. Yeah. You know, to see how they went from here to there to there, and now they, they're continuing on. And for me to say to an artist, oh, you suck, you're terrible. I don't do that. I invite you to come and showcase your work. Okay? If you show us what you have, I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine. And, and that kind of ties into part of when I joined TEDx Honolulu as a volunteer. The theme that year was cultivating community yeah. and uh, that sort of continues to resonate with me as a volunteer and mm -hmm. just even interacting with different folks that are either speaking or also our community partners yeah. as well. Well, I, 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 I think that's where this relation between the fringe and um, TEDx is, 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 is oh, what would you call this? The universe coming together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and for that back to uh, the, the beginning of, of the Fringe Festival, these artists just wanted to showcase their work, but they weren't given the opportunity. So away they went. And I think to cultivate uh, people that have ideas, I think it's a human uh, uh, human need, uh, love for other humans that we do cultivate and nurture other people. Yeah, and, and that is the essence of cultivating community because yeah. You, not only with this person feeling great and having a way to express themselves, you know, it helps them in every way. And then that's yeah. a ripple effect because then they're kinder or, or more generous to someone they meet or more encouraging. And then on, on it goes. Yes, so yes, that's a beautiful yes. thing that you're yeah. doing because Thank freedom you. of expression, there's not a lot of places, um, you know, to really have people express themselves en masse where other people can, like I said earlier, you know, find a connection and where maybe they don't come out of their shell or they could never see themselves up there, but someone is up there taking that chance and putting themselves out there and that invites that connection. And it's so beautiful. So exciting, as you say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It is, it is exciting to be involved in uh, such a collaboration that benefits both, both parties. So yeah. thank you guys. Well, thank you, and we are now going to go to another commercial break and uh, look forward to hearing more about Oahu Fringe, what's to come. Thank you so much. Hi, Jay. Hi, my, name's, <laughs> my name's Keith Bettinger. I knew that. And I'm the host of Think Tech Asia. I knew that, too. Here on Think Tech. Fabulous. Um, You've got a great show going, thank Keith. Thank you very much. And for uh, our viewers out there that are interested in Think Tech Asia, it airs every Tuesday from 4 to 4. 4:45, and uh, it can be accessed online at thinktech.com. Yeah. So, what kind of guests you like? Well, we have a, a number of guests from from academia, 
uh, from uh, practitioners of international affairs. Sometimes we have uh, military officials. Sometimes we have public officials on the show. And our goal, uh, we try to talk about uh, current issues in South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and Central Asia, all throughout the Asian realm in more depth than you would find in traditional mainstream That's media. the difference, isn't it? Exactly. That you're, you're reaching out beyond what ordinary news media would do. Right. We're trying that's to, why we like you so much. We're trying to provide a, a thinking person's perspective, an intelligent perspective on what's going on and where both sides of the story, or even when there's more than two sides, we try to cover every angle. And I think that that's, uh, that's uh, one of the big benefits that we provide here at ThinkTech, is it's a really innovative source of educational programming for the people of Hawaii. You're great, Keith. You're, you are a great host. You've got a great show going on. I watch it every week. Thanks very much. Why don't you guys watch it every week, too, okay? 4.45 to uh, 4 to 4.45 every Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Behind the Scenes and Beyond the Talk. Here we have Nisa from the Oahu Fringe Festival and the lovely Samantha, volunteer extraordinaire with TEDx Honolulu. So now we are going to get a little more, Nisa, into um, the Oahu Fringe Festival, uh, things that you've done in the past, maybe some changes you've made and what to look for in the future and some things maybe you've seen. Uh, you said you went to one other Fringe Festival. And Yes, um, <clears throat> here in Hawaii, there's actually the Maui French Festival, and they've been going for five years now. Oh. Um, so again, they're a little baby, but they're growing as well. Um, and it's exciting to, you know, I would love, <clears throat> I'm going to put it out there, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to have Hawaii as a destination for a fringe and have other big French festivals come to Hawaii. That uh, has always been at the back of my mind to make Hawaii an actual destination for mm -hmm. French festival, as, as a French festival destination. <coughs> so and what I is that, a French festival? So oh, they, they when, when, other, um, when this becomes a permanent fixture in Hawaii, for example, like the Edinburgh French Festival, that's a destination where people go to the French festival. So that French other French festivals, so you guys maybe in this French festival would say, all right, everyone, come on, let's go, we're going to go to Edinburgh. Yes, and they could come here, and we could mm. possibly host. They have. Um, conferences every year and I've never been able to go because the distance and money um, so if we're able to establish this as a, as a base as a destination for other French festivals to come to I think we would be in a great place Hawaii would be in a great place because you look a little bit you know took it down the fit yeah. um, so as for year five um, I want that to succeed because it's five is a big number uh, well number five <laughs> um, and I'm planning towards that um, slowly but I'm hoping that it'll be a big 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 uh, occasion all right yeah. the five-year anniversary mm -hmm. yes. festival is gonna really be <laughs> off okay <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah. that's I, great I know that with TEDx Honolulu we've um, had similar aspirations mm -hmm. to be sort of a destination and and an event that others around the world look to as um, a model, but then also just coming to sort of learn from us and see how we, you know, work um, within our community and. Well, yeah. we I, putting it out there. I, I really want Hawaii to be a destination, you know, a French festival destination. So I think what you guys with TEDx I'm doing right now, it's, it's a possibility. And hey, who does not want to come? Exactly. <laughs> we were going to put it out there. And no! Gonna be, okay. <laughs> we're going to put it out there. That's what's going to okay. be. And we'll just make it happen. TEDx and Oahu French Festival. Yes, you heard it here first. <laughs> Five years. It's going to be a big event. Yes. So it's exciting to, to be in this partnership. And I, and I, you know, to both of us, TEDx and French, the growth. We all want that growth. And we all want it to succeed. Go for it. Put it out there. <laughs> so, um, in our partnership, um, at your event, do you have um, how, what does it look like? You have different venues, and do you have um, something with your partnerships um, around? And then also, who are some of your other partners? How do you include them? Is I guess what I'm but, asking. Um, again, because we're very small, our resources are very small, so we do what we can do, and you know, the visibility is, is 
one of those things that we offer them, like on our flyers and posters and mm -hmm. such, which is all the traditional um, you know, promotion, and of course through social media and such. Right. Um, and even events like this, you know, you get to talk about it. Um, our other partners, we've had folks um, that come in from different medias, medium, for example. Um, we've had the folks that help us with our social media. Um, right. Because, you know, as a volunteer-based uh, organization or event, you can't do everything. So you don't right. have to you know, let other folks do stuff. Although I try, because you know when you leave, you're going to talk to Genesis about this. Um, when it's something that you started, you want to be able to, to do the best you can. And so your hands are always there making sure everything is okay. So our partnerships have also come from other fringe festivals. Oh, like, nice. for example, the Hollywood Fringe Festival. They helped out with our, our website, uh, designing our website. Wow, that's great. Um, and yeah, they all come from different yeah, sectors of the community, which is exciting. But again, um, I do know that I need to, to do a lot more outreach uh, so the community gets to know who we are. Um, again, when you don't have those resources, it can be very difficult. Right. Well, it sounds like yeah. you're doing something right if you guys have doubled, really. Yeah, exactly. More than doubled. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you. I think that um, that's all thanks to the artists. You know, because we tell them, okay, we're putting this on, but you, the artist, you've got to go out there and promote your right, work. Right, exactly. Promote your work. Again, it comes back to people. I mean, the people that I saw at the TEDx, um, you know, they were walking by and they stopped and talked to us. But if we went there to physically showcase us, you know, to share with them, they would not, you know, have found out about right. us. And it's exciting, it's exciting when somebody stops and says, It hey, is, especially when they're you? largely yeah. an academic, right? And yes. then you're a creative, yes. and, and this, these two worlds can collide yes. because it's all about thinking outside of the box and, and uh, exactly. figuring new ways to do old things <laughs> and, you know, to mm -hmm. get people's attention or to get your message across. Yeah, you know? and to get them excited, because if they're excited, you know, that just adds to your, wow, we're doing a good thing. We're doing a very, very positive thing. And we're helping the community. Right, and then partnerships are formed, and everyone knows that's even the strongest way to really mm -hmm. get your message across when two people from different uh, organizations or even mindsets can get together and make something happen and feed into each other. And yeah, I said before, when Genesis, uh, 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 you know, when we, we start talking about it, it I, I didn't know second guess myself or even think about it, I just said, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, she has that effect she, on people. <laughs> she's contagious in a lot of I know. You know her energy and, and talking to her and to have her support. And, and, uh, um, last time we talked, um, not by email, by phone, you could just hear that um, energy she had. I wish I was like that. I know. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we all kind of have, have something to learn from her, but it sounds like you're doing pretty good. You've oh, got your own festival running for you. four years thank strong you. and <clears throat> more than doubled your participation. Yes. And, and that's not easy here because like you said, uh, you know, it's hard to get the word out and hard to get people there yeah. and, you know, committed to following through with it, the performers themselves and mm -hmm. then getting people to show up. And uh, so, and it sounds like a lot of coordination with all the venues and the volunteers and the performers and that's, that's a lot. It is, but you know, you just, tick those boxes as you, as you go along. So, I mean, you guys have a big event that you do. Again, we're real small, 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 but we try and do the best that we can. And again, connecting those dots, working with other uh, events out there, it benefits all of us. So, right. so thank you. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know if there are any other Fringe Festival and TEDx relationships out there? Or are we sort of, I guess trend setting or I, I do yeah, not. Doing I think this is. I think, new. I yeah. think this is probably the f first that I've heard of. Um, you know, I f after this, I'm going to go and um, talk to all well, the other French right. <laughs> French Hey, have you guys ever thought about you know connecting with um, TEDx? <laughs> oh, no, I think this is the first time. I, I should actually. Yeah, I'm going to go and email everybody. Guess what I was doing today? <laughs> so I know that you can't, uh, you know, share all your secrets with us, but. We're just really excited about this upcoming year's mm -hmm. Fringe Festival and also next year's TEDx Honolulu. We're already starting to work on it and think on it. And, uh, and so okay. I'm just wondering if you have or if you know of anything that, um, that you would like to maybe add or do differently this year or something like that. Or yeah, I can't share all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Ear to ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, well, year five, as you just mentioned before, um, I wanted to succeed, and I have some ideas of uh, expanding it more than, than what we've done so far and be more visible with the community. Um, I could share that one of the ideas <laughs> that I'm sharing is I want to be able to do a little um, kind of mini festival during lunch hour uh, oh, nice. for the community down in downtown. Because we're located in downtown Chinatown, I think it's a great place and a great, because you have like, for example, um, uh, Fourth Street. Mm -hmm. Fourth Street mm -hmm. and you go across uh, the one street over and there's that park. The uh, Tamarind Square? Tamarind Park, yeah. Right. Yeah. And further down, um, even down towards Aloha Tower, those are great places that you could have lunchtime performances. And I want that to happen for French Fry. I French love Fry. it! <laughs> <laughs> and then we can work with TEDx and look, even TEDx could be part of that and doing lunchtime TED Talk. Did I just make that up? You did. <laughs> and I think we're going to have to definitely revisit that. That's a great concept. But really, because it makes it more accessible to the people. Everyone yes. can't come back into town in the evening or something because they have children. Or, or there are my myriad reasons mm -hmm. that people can't attend the evening events. But they could probably yeah. come to a lunchtime event and, and, yes. and in their neighborhood. And they might stumble upon it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because everybody is there to what, work. They've got their life. Right. So if you provide that... Um, provide that, that, that thing, I don't have a word for it, you know, they could see it. And then you never know, again, we're getting back to the sharing those ideas. Exactly, and then you let their appetite come up. They're yes. like, oh, that looks interesting. And then, then, then you can yeah. give them information about the main Fringe Festival, just a little teaser event. That's a great idea. Exactly. So that's been ticking the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that, to be more visible because of number five was. So, I got my fingers crossed that it's going to work. Great. It's actually really scary well, talking about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Too. All right, well, good, because we're about to close the show. So, <laughs> you're off the hook. Thank you. No more yeah. secrets. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, you've just joined us at Behind the Talk and Beyond the Scenes. I meant Beyond the Talk and Behind the Scenes. Sorry about that. Have a great week. <laughs>